you translate into human strength the energy used by every single inhabitant of France, between 400 and 500 energy slaves would work endless to maintain his way of life. And his way of life is also mine, and maybe yours. Most of the energy consumed in Europe is fossil and the main source of greenhouse gas emissions. Knowing this, I would like to know if it's possible to free our energy slaves. Or is it possible to replace fossil energy in equal measure with the renewables without destroying ecosystems and biodiversity? To my opinion, the contemporary discourse about energy transition is too often reflecting a quantitative obsession where fossil fuels must be replaced in equal quantities by renewable energies. But this doesn't address enough the question of the modern culture based on the exploitation of the earth and our built-up environment. The exponential growth of our cities has to be related to the exploitation of fossil energy. And this dependency has made our cities and ourselves addicted on fossil fuels so much that we are almost prisoners in our cities. On one hand, buildings' materials made from petroleum derivatives are everywhere. And in addition to having been the fuel of its production, the modern cities is now depending on fossil fuels to function. In fact, it is in the very functioning of modern life and in the way urban neighborhoods are connected together that dependence on fossil fuels is more significant. 75% of gross European energy consumed is of fossil origin. And nearly a third of the gross energy consumption is used for transportation. Roads, highways, airports areas, as well as monofunctional industrial and commercial zones accessible only by car could not exist without fossil fuels and are completely dependent on it. We can say today that the architecture of oil is an architecture that goes far beyond the scale of a building. The architecture of oil is on the scale of our globalized world and is mostly made of infrastructures and the very infrastructure of the organization of our societies. The shift from fossil fuels to renewables announced the transformation of this architecture in a post-petroleum ecology. A new architecture of the transition will need to connect the places of production and consumption of local renewable energies. The infrastructure has to emancipate itself as a matter energy space of a post-oil society, drawing on the earth and with the earth a network of natural forces like sun, wind and water, coordinated with new ecologies and new ways of life. But what could be the architecture of energy landscapes where a transitional lifestyle can flourish? How should we transform matter into spaces according to a frugal way of life and is a way of the trafinitude of the limited natural resources available on Earth? Now I would like to synthesize four clues of a contemporary architectural scene that tends toward a conscious way of life. So first, we have to colonize the fossil geography. Places that are the least rooted in the territories are the most fragile and the most able to change. The sites allowing the new dialogue with natural forces will be able to germinate in the abundant geography of oil as industrial zones and monofunctional areas. We have to transform our cities instead of building new living areas on fertile ground. Second, we need to produce food locally. It is necessary to reconnect with productive hinterland of our living spaces. The architecture of the transition will need to reveal the food production chain. For instance, we can produce food on the roofs of buildings and reclaim the soil under our cities. Integrating food production in mixed-use buildings could free up agriculture areas currently covered by off-ground ag agriculture. And the local production reduces energy consumption of, for transport. Third, we need to occupy the boundary between us and the environment and to install a stronger dialogue with the nature. For modern times, to the present day, the limits between inside and outside have become thin energy efficient boundaries. Rethinking thermal comfort means setting up different spaces according to needs and restoring a constant dialogue with the environment. It is necessary to imagine an architecture that breathes, capable of reacting the flows of time, season and uses and cosmic energy. 
membrane enveloping buildings made of temperate spaces could complete reduced individual climate controlled spaces. And fourth, we need a new definition of comfort and to feel it as an improvement of quality of life. Shared spaces anchored in an intermediate and benevolent social scale can replace individual energy consuming spaces. We can reduce private spaces by offering residents more common services. Analog to some new collective housing projects, common spaces such as party rooms, general kitchen, rooms for guests, cinema or music can offer new comfort in a local social fabric. In this emerging era of remote work, these shared spaces offer new comfort and also respond to a growing need for intergenerational social cohesion. But are we ready to leave now the comfort that modernity has given us? And finally, more important, are we ready to free our energy slaves?